Um, but then a lot of perpetrators, they, they themselves have been victims. And so I kind of mm -hmm. wanted to know his side of things. Um, and I know some people may think that's crazy, but that's just the kind of heart that I have. And I felt like that would kind of give me a certain sense. Yeah, of like hope. you wanted the why. Like, why did you do this? How did this? No, that right. absolutely makes sense. So I, and I've been there. So that's why I can relate to that. It's absolutely. Yeah. And so I, um, as I'm finishing up writing the book, um, I went to visit him on his deathbed. Um, another loved one wanted me to go and support her. And so I remember being in the room with him and there were like a few other loved ones there. And um, I kind of, I didn't really know what to expect, but here I am grieving what's about to be the loss of a loved one. But this is a loved one that's violated me sexually. Right. Um, but in that moment, it was like, nonetheless, it's still a loved one that's clinging to their life. And so it's never easy to watch anyone like clinging on to life. Like at that point, he wasn't even verbal. And then I had so many mixed emotions and feelings because there was a part of me that always wanted to say, I forgive you because he never acknowledged what happened. He never apologized. I think at some point in his mind, he kind of convinced himself that it didn't happen. And so in that moment, I, my heart <laughs> and my mind just wanted to utter, I forgive you. But at the same time, I was so mindful and considerate of him. I didn't want to upset him. I didn't want the other people in the room that were there just to support him to be looking like, what she means, she forgive him, you know? And so um, in that moment, all I could say was, I love you. And that was closure for me. And I was like, God, I really got a sense of humor because it was like what I imagined closure would look like. It looked nothing like that. And so that was the most challenging part. 